Hello, my name is Lindsay Wyrick, and today I'm going to show you how you can make this adorable fishbowl artwork. We'll be using a piece of watercolor paper and a circle cutter to trim it into a fishbowl shape. But if you don't have this, you can simply trace a uh, plate or any other circle you have, or even use a compass for this. I just wanted to get a basic fishbowl shape, and since I already had a circle cutter, I decided to use that. I want to make a little flat ridge on the bottom so I just made it so my circle template would overlap and then I left a little space at the top of my paper so I could cut kind of like a little um, opening of a fishbowl at the top. Again using the circle cutters I had on hand but you can use whatever you happen to have at home. Scissors work just fine. You could even keep your paper rectangular and make a rectangle aquarium. So be creative. If you're doing this in a classroom with kids let them use their imaginations for the shape aquarium that they want to make. Now the first thing we're going to do here is make a resist and this is going to be for the shiny spots on our aquarium. You can use a white crayon for this or a piece of canning wax like I have here. I have to say just plain old canning wax from the grocery store works really great. You could even chop up an old candle for this. It really doesn't matter. The, uh, the waxier it is, the better resist you're going to get. And you can also use regular watercolors for this if you want. But I thought it'd be a great opportunity to use the ink tense pencils because we can keep layering without them smudging out, which I really like. Now, if you hold your fishbowl there to the light, you can kind of see where your wax is if you've forgotten where you've put it down because it will be invisible until you paint over it. So it can be a little confusing. Now I'm using my ink tense pencils to sketch on a fish. Now, the reason I wanted to use ink tense here is because once I liquefy it, it will be permanent. So I'll be able to layer up and not worry about um, my first layers, but it's translucent and it will react um, against the wax. So I can paint over with the ink tents just like I could with watercolor and it will preserve the areas of the white paper that I wanted to preserve. It's just a fun way to use these products. Now I've sped this up a little bit because um, I didn't want to take all day, but I wanted you to be able to see the process of just sketching and coloring in this fish. I love that you can mix the colors when you're using transparent media like this, you can mix the colors and create all sorts of new colors. Just overlap them when you sketch them down and then when you go in with water, it's gonna blend them together. I'm just trying to make sure when I put colors next to, next to each other, I'm using analogous colors and all that means is color friends. So if you look at a color wheel and you see that green and blue are next to each other, they're color friends. So if you color them next to each other, they're not gonna make mud when you blend them with water. So just keep that in mind, the color wheel and color friends and you'll never make mud again. If you remember your color friends, you'll never make mud again. It's a little uh, a little rhyme you can remember to help you remember there. So if I use the pink and the blue, it's going to make purple. They're not going to make mud. If I did pink, if I did blue and orange right next to each other and just smooshed them together willy-nilly, they would make mud. So I'm careful if I've got opposites or complementary colors. I call them opposites because they're opposite on the color wheel. If I have opposites, I'm just really careful not to mush them together and to clean my brush, just wipe it on a rag in between. And here you can see how vibrant these colors look once you add the water. It's kind of hard to believe that you're going to, when you color it down dry, you can hardly see it. But as soon as you add water, it's like, whoa, Nelly, get ready for some color. And I really like that about the ink tents. I feel like you get a lot of bang for your buck with that product. Water brushes are great solutions for in-classroom work because you don't have to have a bunch of pots of water. To clean them off between colors, all you have to do is wipe them on a rag or paper towel. So just kind of keep those handy. If you are teaching this to a class, make sure everyone has a rag. They can wipe their brush off in between colors. Now here, I realized the uh, reference photo I had of the fish looked kind of weird. So I wanted to extend that fin just because it looked kind of funny. Now, if you want really dark detailed lines when you're using ink tents, when the paper's wet, go in with a sharp pencil and just draw those lines and you will get some really nice detail like I did on the uh, the fins there. Now I wanted to fill up the, uh, the composition a little bit more. So I'm sketching in a couple goldfish and also just some like grasses growing from the bottom of the fishbowl to kind of just give it like a less lonely appearance and also to add some interest. I'm also sketching in some like gravelly rocks at the bottom there to help weight the fishbowl down visually and just to add some new textures and some new colors and detail to go in. We've got a lot of bright colors with those fish. So to make the bright colors appear vibrant, you need some neutrals. So by putting in some gravel at the bottom, giving some more earthy greens in the grasses, it's just gonna help give us a, a nice well-rounded composition and balance of colors there. And I like to liquefy as I go because 
for one, it's hard to tell how dark and how deep and how bright your colors are until you add the water to them when you're working with ink tents, but also to, to set the colors. Remember, these become permanent, they become waterproof once you add water. So um, it just makes sense to kind of do it as you go. You can kind of see the earthy uh, darks I got with that bark pencil on the gravel. Now what I'm doing here is doing a mild resist. I'm using a Derwent Colorsoft white pencil and I'm using that to kind of lighten up some of the areas on my fish but also it's going to protect the color underneath. It's not super duper 100% opaque. I could put this over my colors and it will preserve the colors. Now if I had a invisible clear wax pencil that would work really well too but um, I don't know of any of those <laughs> any invisible clear wax pencils. You could whittle your candy wax down to a point. You'll just have to keep sharpening it because it's so soft it would keep uh, wearing down so you could definitely use that just you know you'd have to keep sharpening it you really can't beat the white pencil for this it's it's just so easy another thing I really like the white pencil for is to do some bubbles so I can keep a nice sharp point and I can just kind of keep going around and around and getting some nice bubbly resists there getting some nice circles I'm using a circle template this is by see-through ruler um, you could use any brand or you could even freehand it it would be just as cute I think with small circles like that you probably could freehand it just as well or if you're a knitter and you have a knitting gauge that would also work well to do your bubbles. Just be sure to press firmly when you're making your bubbles and keep in mind that wax resist is going to be more subtle than your crayon or canning wax will be. Now to fill in some more of the composition here I'm using a sharp pencil in the color bark to draw this kind of lacy foliage. It's kind of angular which I think is a nice contrast between the fluttery fins of the fish and the green blades of a plant there. So I just like that contrast of texture and pattern and I think it really does add a beautiful um, a beautiful effect there and I'm speeding this up a little bit you can see it almost has like a crackly effect or design to it and I try to find things like that that if I have a lot of curved and rounded and soft shapes I try to find some hard angular shapes just to contrast it and um, make the design a little more dynamic and you can find different plants and fish and things like that to put together to give you a unique look in your aquarium or fishbowl painting I really love the pattern that it makes here. Now one thing you're going to want to be aware of is that you need to lock down this layer with some water but you want to paint over it pretty carefully because if you just went back and forth over it you're going to have um, you're going to have that kind of brownish color going everywhere so do take care and use the fine tip water brush to go in and just make sure you keep those lines um, intact. Even when you brush over it a little bit with your blue later on, it could bleed it a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Now here I decided that I wanted to deepen up the color in the grasses, especially as they're kind of emerging from the rocks and as they overlap each other, I want to have the grasses in back a little bit darker so that it'll have a little more, a um, little more depth and perspective. And I am brightening up some of the tops of the leaves and the, and the uh, leaves in front just to give them make them advance a little bit more and again just going in with a water brush to liquefy that pigment and lock it down into the paper that's one thing you want to keep in mind when you're using ink tense pencils is that you need to dissolve the pigment or it's not going to be waterproof for the next layer so with this project where we're learning how to layer our elements we want to make sure we lock down each layer now I did put some highlights on the blades of grass with the white chroma flow pencil or I use color soft chroma flow will work really well too so you can kind of see them resisting that green a little bit and keeping that nice bright white edge so it's just kind of a nice little um, a nice little thing you can do when you mix your color pencils with your water-based color pencils now here I'm actually picking up some pigment from the tip of the blue ink tense pencil here and I am layering it up where I want a little bit more intense color I can also dab on some pattern little dots there so you have a lot of versatility here here it's like using a pan of watercolor paint so so you can use the pencils in all these different ways to get the most variety out of your material. I like to um, add that pattern onto the fish. I like to build up my colors. I did put those little stripes of the color, the white colored pencil there so that it's going to protect some of the color underneath where I want it to if I don't want to cover it up. And I can go in and add a little bit more intense color where I feel like I didn't get the color bright enough on the first go round. You can see I just painted over those spots and since I went in there and used the wet ink tents and let it dry 
it's not moving. So it's just such a fun effect that you don't get with like watercolor or other media. I'm also going to perk up some of the oranges here. I'm going to add a little bit of a kind of a darker color to the bottom of the goldfish there to just give it a little bit of a roundedness and a little bit of depth. And you could even dab on fish scales. So you can get that kind of fish scale texture by kind of dabbing it rather than painting it. Be experimental with your projects. It's only a piece of paper, right? So you might as well try different techniques and see what works best for your artwork and for what you're trying to achieve. Here I'm doing more linear strokes because I want to get that uh, texture of the fins, how it kind of has the, um, has those kind of almost like little, um, you know, liney, almost crepey lines through it. I'm trying to get that. And also going in with a brush, I can really direct where I want the color. Now here's where you can see the resist really start to happen. I did my masking tape trip, I, trick. I just stuck a piece of masking tape on my work surface and scribbled out the um, uh, like the turquoisey and green and blue shades. And then I'm just painting it over everything. Now, remember what I said about you would still get some bleeding in, the, um, in that bark area if it wasn't all locked down. So you can see a little bit of a ghosting from that brown where I didn't dissolve every single little grain of pigment particle. Uh, so that's why you want to do that. If I hadn't done that at all, if I didn't even go in there and dissolve it to begin with, it would just be really murky. It would like it would look like that fishbowl hadn't been cleaned in a while, and that's not the look we're going for. Now here, I do not have to worry about painting over anything with these colors because it, while it's still wet, I could blot it off, and it's not going to disturb any of the fish or the gravel or anything like that. So kind of keep that in mind. If, if it turns out you put it on too dark and you don't like it, before it dries and has a chance to set, grab your paper towel or your rag and just blot it off. So there's nothing to be afraid of. I know sometimes we get a little nervous when we have put a lot of work into something and then we're going and putting a glaze on top of everything. That can be a little nerve wracking, but really it's just a piece of paper, number one. And number two, if you grab a rag really quick, you can blot it off before it dries and sets. Ink tents is going to stay workable until it dries. So just kind of keep that in mind. You don't have to be like, uh, be totally afraid to experiment and to try things here. After that layer dries, you can go in and add some more details. So I'm going in and redefining the gravel there, making it pop a bit. And I can go in and add a little bit more color on the grasses if I decide I want them. And you know, on this, if you're not going to go over it again with blue, you could just leave it and not liquefy it. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you're happy with the way your design is and you don't want to go over anymore, you could leave it. You don't have to liquefy it. So I just, I think a lot of people forget that they don't have to use the, um, the ink tense pencils wet. You don't have to liquefy them if you want to go in with those extra details. Just keep in mind if it does get wet in the future, it could um, move around a little bit, but um, just something to keep in mind. So now I'm using the fine tip of the Derwent water brushes to go in and just add a little bit more thickness and darkness to the that plant kind of in the background there. I'm actually using that really dark blue because it just, uh, I think it looks kind of nice over the browner colors, gives it a little more life. I am intensifying that color on the grasses a little bit more and uh, kind of bringing up a little richness. So I'm going in with the paint on my little makeshift masking tape palette and adding that over the color that I added in with the dry pencil. So um, it just makes it a little bit darker. You will learn all these tips and tricks the more you play with your products. And I think that's kind of nice about having a limited supply because if you only have 12 colors, you're really going to see what those colors can do. You are really going to push them to their limit. And, um, and I think that's a really good thing. It's always good to, I think, start off with just a few colors and see what you can do with that before you break out, you know, all 72 in the range. I'm using some, uh, I think I'm using baked earth and bark here and some midnight black to go in and add some shading to the gravel. You could also add, like make the gravel different colors too. And you could do some crazy neon gravel if you wanted to, but I thought that having the neutral tones would give it visual weight and also um, give your eyes a break from the more vibrant colors of the fish in this piece. To make the bubbles stand out a little bit more, I'm taking some of the colors that I have in the water and the plants and I'm adding it inside of my bubble shapes. So that's really going to make those really, really pale, light, resist circles stand out. You can use greens, you can use blues, you can even get in little dashes of pink. That's going to give it that kind of iridescent quality that bubbles have. So have fun with that, be creative, and just enjoy your colors. 
I wanted to direct a little bit more color to the edges of the fishbowl. I think that's going to help it feel a little more rounded and also give a visual frame to the piece. So I'm taking the tealy blue color. I'm going around the edges. I've also added in a water line right there at the top of the fishbowl. Can you see like where the big circle kind of stops and then you get the little lip of glass there. And I'm also scribbling some of that blue onto my masking tape so I have a little bit more of the, that to work with when I wet it. Once you've wet the paper, if you go in with the pencil when it's wet or damp, you are going to scratch the surface and not get a smooth effect. That can work out really well when you want to put lines like I did on the uh, fins, but it's not what you want if you want a smooth effect like I do on the glass there. So I'm taking the flat edge of the large flat water brush and just really making sure I get a nice level line there for the water line at the top. You can make your water line lower if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. You put it wherever you want, but I wanted a, I, I thought that looked a little bit nicer having it high and having all of the, um, all of the plants and fish and stuff all fully underwater. Um, and then I'm just liquefying that dry pencil. And you can see I don't have to worry about anything that's underneath because that's all locked down. It just gives you a lot of freedom there. But And I can also direct where I want the blue. So if I need blue somewhere, I don't have it. I can pick it up off the masking tape. And um, it just gives you a lot more versatility. I also wanted to give it the impression of movement. So by picking up the paint off my palette with the big flat brush, I can do kind of some wavy lines using the chisel edge of my brush. And it just feels like things are alive, things are moving, the plants are moving in the water, the water is moving, the fish are swimming, and it just gives it a lively effect rather than it just being all flat. So I don't want a flat color there. I want that movement. I hope you enjoyed this project today. I hope it gives you some ideas on some projects you could do with your ink tense pencils and your watercolor paper. You could make fish bowls and uh, aquariums of all different sizes and really be creative with this type of project. Maybe you wanna do some saltwater aquarium fish. Maybe you have a great knowledge of fish and aquatic plant life and you wanna go super creative with it. I think that's wonderful. Here you can see the finished product. I hope you give it a try. And I wanna thank you so much for watching this video today. I'll have all the supplies I used linked in the video description and uh, please give me a thumbs up before you go it really helps my channel thanks for watching until next time happy crafting